The Picture of Dorian Gray is a late 19th century novel which remains very much a parable for our times. Briefly, it tells the story of a man who falls in love with himself, or more specifically with his own image. You see, Dorian Gray is a handsome and charming, but very self-centered and narcissistic young man whose portrait is painted by an artist taken by his good looks. When the portrait is completed, everyone is captivated by it, but none so much as Dorian himself. In fact, the more Dorian gazes on his portrait, the more he begins to envy it because he knows that while the painting will never change in appearance, he himself will one day grow older and outwardly less attractive, less seductive in the eyes of the world. Indeed, Dorian becomes so obsessed with his portrait that eventually he ransoms his own soul in return for the promise of remaining youthful and handsome in appearance, just like the image painted on the canvas. At any rate, as the years go by, Dorian does indeed retain his youthful and handsome image, outwardly at least, but inwardly, he becomes more and more corrupt, making use of his seductive power over others to exploit them for his own selfish purposes. For instance, he courts a beautiful young actress and promises to marry her. But when she experiences a downturn in her career, he immediately abandons her and moves on. In fact, he does it in such a cruel way that she ends up taking her own life. And yet even this does not stop him from continuing along the self-centered path he has chosen. Year after year, at his, as his friends and contemporaries grow older, he continues to stay young, leading a life of ever greater self-indulgence and self-centeredness, telling others whatever they want to hear and seductively getting his way, no matter what the cost to others. One day, years after making his covenant with dark powers, Dorian is confronted by the artist who had painted his portrait and who for so many years had been enthralled to him. When the artist confronts him with the cruel and wicked things that he's done, Dorian becomes enraged and grabbing a knife, he stabs the artist to death. Afterward, Dorian looks at the portrait of himself and he sees that the image on the canvas has now drastically changed. The image now appears old and ugly, sinister and cruel. In a moment of self-awareness, he recognizes that this is what he's become, a spiritual monster. And in despair, he attacks the portrait with the knife, ripping it into shreds. At the conclusion of the novel, Dorian's acquaintances enter his apartment only to find an unspoiled portrait of a handsome young man and the body of a shriveled up hideous old man lying dead beside it. The picture of Dorian Gray is a parable about life which has lasting appeal because it says something so true about our human nature. And the truth is, the more we give in to our self-centered and selfish tendencies, the more we live on the level of outward appearances because that's all we have. This is so common in our time. Think of the cult of the Kardashians, the cult of celebrity in general. We worship people who are famous simply for being famous, people who become billionaires by obsessing about their looks and causing others to obsess about their outward appearance as well. You see, as Christian values fade in our world, superficial and false values increase, and we project a false image of ourselves because we don't want others to see and know what is truly in our hearts and souls. And sadly, we begin to judge others by these arbitrary and false values too. In the gospel today, our Lord tells the story of a man who had two sons. To all appearances, the first son was rebellious and disobedient. When his father told him to go and work in the vineyard, 
He said no. Later on, however, he repented of his disobedience, and he did what his father commanded. The other son outwardly was a model of of obedience and humility. When his father told him to go and work in the vineyard, he said, yes, sir. But his outward demeanor was false. He never went. The Lord asked, which of the two sons did his father's will? And the obvious answer is the first, the one who initially rebelled, but then later repented of his sin. Repentance. Metanoia in the Greek text of the New Testament is an attitude of heart that makes us pleasing and attractive to God. The prophet Ezekiel makes this clear in our first reading today when he speaks about the spiritual death of the once virtuous man who little by little turns away from God and embraces a life of sin and vice. And the new life of grace that is given to the sinner who repents and little by little becomes virtuous. In the end, the prophet Ezekiel says, repentance wins the day. This is why the Lord gave us the sacrament of reconciliation so that we might see the truth about ourselves, so that we might face the truth about ourselves, so that we might tell the truth about ourselves, even when the truth is painful or selfish or sinful, so that we can turn away from ourselves and turn toward God. Our Lord Jesus knows that by regularly and faithfully examining our hearts with the help of the Holy Spirit and then by confessing our sins to a priest through whom our Lord himself acts, that humble act of soul searching and that spiritual encounter between two Christians becomes a way of looking into a spiritual mirror and seeing ourselves as we are in the light of God's healing power. Healing grace was precisely what was missing when Dorian Gray saw himself as he was. He saw the ugly reality of his sinfulness. He saw the self-centered monster he had become. But he did not see the mercy of God in that moment. And he could not bear the reality of his sin all by himself. He needed the mercy of Jesus Christ. This is what was lacking in the heart of Judas when he regretted his betrayal of the Lord. He did not turn in faith to God, and so he gave in to despair. God does not judge by outward appearance. He sees what is in our hearts. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, I trust in you.